Okay, we're back again. We're going to take a look at the power plant and the transmission on this fire truck. I'm going to be talking about a lot of the components and the things that you should be looking for when you do a daily inspection of your apparatus to make sure that it's safe to go down the road. Remember that what we're looking for are potential problems. Okay, loose, be loose belts, loose hoses, loose electrical uh, conduits, anything that looks amiss or any kind of fluid leaks or obvious chafing of things against each other, anything that looks misaligned, we're going to check the brackets for looseness and integrity and we're going to walk through these different components here over the next few minutes. We're going to start with the radiator inspection in the front of the truck we'll work our way back. The radiator is comprised of a bunch of coils with an upper tank and a lower tank. You can see the upper tank here with all these bolts. You want to look in this area for any kind of fluid leaks. Make sure that there's no radiator fluid leaking anywhere. You can see the radiator fan. You should be able to see all the blades. There should be no missing blades on the fan and no damage to the fan. All right. As you work your way back, you can see this rubber mounted rod right here. This is the radiator mount. These rubber mounts and these bolts should all be in place. The shiny cylinder right here you can see is the lift cylinder for the cab. There should be no leaks in that area of hydraulic fluid. Okay, here's the frame rail. We talked about the steering, power steering pump earlier, power steering hoses. All right, you can see these power steering hoses go into the power steering reservoir. All right, there should be no leaks in this area. Back up towards the front here, this is the air conditioning compressor. You want to check the belt on the air conditioning compressor, make sure it's not frayed or damaged and it has about a quarter of an inch of play when you push on it with your fingers. Okay? You want to make sure that that belt is aligned as it goes through all the different pulleys around the front of the engine. Okay? Once we look at the, the fan belt or the serpentine belt, we want to move back to this area. This blue component is the air compressor that supplies compressed air to the brake system. It's also it's driven by the engine and potentially you could see oil leaks if the seals were leaking on this okay but this looks there's some road grime but I don't see any any uh, evidence of any fluid leaks in this area along the side of the engine is the fuel injection system this is the fuel filter here and these are the lines and the fuel injectors in this area so we're looking for any kind of fuel leaks it'll be obvious the diesel smell will, will permeate the area if there is a diesel leak you'll be able to pick that up right away Okay. You can see the substantial size of this bracket that holds the air conditioner in place and these rods that bolt into the, into the transmission. You want to make sure that these are tight and that nothing is loose. On the top, the valve cover. This is a part of the turbocharger system or the, the uh, intercooler that pressurizes the crankcase. You want to make sure all these clamps are in place and that nothing looks amiss or damaged in the top of the engine. Here are the dipsticks for the essential fluids. Engine, tran let's see, this is engine oil, this is transmission fluid. It goes all the way to the back and goes into the transmission all the way over there on that side. Okay, as we move our way back, you can see down in this area, this is the engine starter. There's an electrical lug nut right there that should be tight and none of these wires should be loose. All right. Okay, so that's the left side of the engine. You can see the wiring harnesses here. We'll make sure these are all tied down and nothing has come loose or is shaking around. All right. Here's another wiring bundle. You want to check this. Make sure that these plugs are tight and that nothing is loose in this area. All right. Now we're going to talk about the transmission on the left side. If you see you see this orange component right here, this is a power takeoff that's used to drive this hydraulic pump that runs the PTO driven generator in the back of the truck. So we want to look here for any kind of evidence of any fluid leaks or any loose components, anything that's not strapped down. See that bracket right there? Make sure that's tight as we work down the left side of the transmission. Here's the rear transmission mount. We'll make sure that bolt is in place and that's secured to the frame rails. You can see that going across there. All right, now we're going to move to the right side of the engine and start at the front and move to the back. Okay, now we're on the right side of the truck. We're going to start up in the front again with the radiator. Take a look at the radiator cap and right close to it here you can see the, uh, the sight glass to make sure that you have enough radiator fluid in the radiator. You can see that it's a green color. That indicates that it's full. 
All right, if you look along the right side here, you'll see the top of that upper, upper radiator tank with all the bolts. There's no evidence of any leaking. These hoses are tight and I can see the right side of the radiator fan now and I'm looking at the blades all the way down to make sure that they're all intact and there's nothing missing. On this, on the right side, I can see where the serpentine belt comes across and goes through the idler or the tensioner. Everything looks in alignment and the belt looks like it's in good condition. Okay, this component right here is the alternator that generates electricity for the truck. It also has a substantial bracket that it's bolted to and we want to look and make sure that that bracket is not cracked and that the alternator is not loose. Okay, see the, the wiring off the alternator, make sure that these, these, uh, these tie wraps are in place and that nothing looks like it's been damaged. On the right side here you also see another radiator mount with rubber shock absorber mounts on it, make sure that's intact. And this is the other lift cylinder for the right side that lifts the cab. No leaking in that area. Now if you pan down here you'll see the intake on this particular truck which is on the right side of the, of the frame rail and this is where the air intake comes in into the turbocharger. Okay? This is the turbocharger. We have the cold section compressor over here and we have the hot section turbine on this side. Remember the turbocharger is driven by the exhaust gases of the engine. The exhaust gases going over the turbine wheel it has a common shaft, the truck idle for at least five minutes to let the oil that's superheated around the turbocharger be carried away and cooled before you shut it down. That will ensure uh, appropriate service life for the turbocharger. Okay. In this area on the right side of the engine you'll see the main oil filter for the engine that gets changed frequently. You can see how new it looks. This is the exhaust manifold. You want to make sure all these bolts are in place. That there's no missing bolts. Right, and once again the valve cover and we check the seals on the valve cover. From the hot section of the turbo the exhaust gases leave the truck through the exhaust system. So we're looking for any damage to the exhaust system as it travels back below the frame rail. Now in our other, in our other uh, segment we did an inspection from under the truck and we looked at the muffler. On the right side of the transmission once again you can see where the bolts attach it to the engine. You want to check make sure these bolts are all in place. And you can see right here this mushroom looking thing. This is an air vent for the transmission. So we certainly wouldn't want to go in any water deeper than that or water will get pulled into the transmission potentially. Okay, there's the motor mount I talked about before. You can see it's bolted into the back of the transmission. And then right here is the drive shaft and the U-joint. The drive shaft goes towards the back of the truck. Okay, while we have the cab tilted, I wanted to repeat part of the inspection that I filmed in another segment and I wanted to have a look from uh, at the brake system from up above because it's easier to see some of the components here. So let me point these out to you. Okay, You can see the air supply lines. They come into the brake chamber. This is the brake chamber and this is a typical air brake chamber on any type of truck that has air brakes. Uh, this, is a, this is a single chamber for the front brakes. The rear brakes have a double chamber that we talked about previously. As the air is applied through the air line, when you step on the brake pedal, it pushes this rod out, which in turn pushes on this piston and rotates the cam internally and applies pressure to the brakes that squeeze the rotor and stop the truck. It's important to look in this area for anything that, that looks like it's loose or has been damaged or any kind of grease or oil leaks that may be in this area that would be evidence of something going wrong. Okay, on the newer type of fire trucks, on the tilt cab design, the battery packs are in this area. If you take a look, we've now changed over from a lead acid battery to a gel tech, which are maintenance free. These are gel batteries. The only thing you're looking for as an inspection is, is the battery intact? Is the mounting hardware intact? Is it tight in place? And is there any corrosion on any of the terminals that connect it to the truck? and also are the terminals tight so you want to put your hands on there and move these cables and make sure that they're tight. You want to do this on both sides. We have two on this side and two on the other side of the truck. Okay. So this truck actually has four batteries, four gel cells and you want to make sure that nothing is amiss in this area as well as others.